Um, want to thank you very much for all of you guys coming out tonight. Out of show of hands, where did everybody hear about the meeting from, other than the mayor? I heard it from you. <laughs> <laughs> and Rick. And yeah, fr Rick. A friend of mine told me about friend it. Friend of yours? Okay. I heard someone say Oyster Radio earlier. Oyster Radio, and there was a notification at the post office on the board. Okay. That's what I saw at the post office. Post office. I put the bulletins up at the post office. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you in advance. We got some wanted people at the post office. Well, this is this this actually really makes my heart full that we got so many folks that have come out for this. Um, it's kind of an initial pilot program, and this is our fourth meeting. We've got five counties. We're doing multiple meetings in, so this is our technically only our fourth overall meeting um, here tonight. So what we're here to talk about is this regional rural transportation plan. Uh, we'll get into the nuts and bolts on that here in just a minute, but a little background. I think you've met most of us. So the fatherly figure to my right is Rick. Um, he works in our office, and Marion is uh, graduating from Florida State in what, four weeks? Yeah. Four weeks from, from FSU with her, or eight weeks. Yeah, you got two more months. Two months. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> She'll be graduating from Florida State in planning, and then uh, myself, uh, Quentin Eastberg, we all work for the Appalachian Mutual Planning Council. Um, so a bit about... I guess that we'll back up and we'll get to that here in a second, but this project has been kind of a collaborative effort, years in the making. Um, we've been trying to work very hard with DOT, especially our District District 3 partners, to kind of come up with a way, a collaborative approach uh, to transportation issues uh, in the region. So um, you've got a multi, you know, Tallahassee, Leon County, they're in the MSA, they've got, they have the Metropolitan Planning Organization um, that they include Leon, Jefferson, Gaston, and Wakulla counties all fit inside that MPO. The MPO receives federal funds, and they perform a lot of transportation, you know, projects, they come up with priority projects lists and all these kinds of things. Um, we haven't had that in the, in the rural counties. So our region extends from Jefferson County to Jackson, Calhoun, and Gulf, and then everywhere in between, and the five Western counties, which is kind of how we got into this, was it was kind of everybody was fighting for themselves a little bit for projects, transportation projects, putting in grants and different things like that. Um, so we've had a, some conversation with DOT over the years, and we've been uh, we're fortunate enough to get a pilot project to develop this regional rural transportation plan. So looking kind of across maybe county boundaries and things like that, looking at some regional side of transportation planning which is what our background is. So the RPC was formed back in the late 70s uh, through an interlocal agreement with the nine counties. There are 10 RPCs in the state. Like I said, ours is the nine counties right here in the Panhandle. Uh, we got a partner, um, Emerald Coast Regional Council there in the far western part of the Panhandle. Um, we do a little bit of everything. You know, our mission, we view ourselves really as an extension of the, the county staff. So we kind of help provide technical assistance in a number of different areas. Um, you can see kind of our mission up there is provide technical assistance in a form of communication and collaboration, which is really the reason we're here, right? To collaborate, uh, to preserve and enhance economic, natural, and social environments within the region. We do this through transportation planning, which is why we're here tonight. We've got an environmental planning program. We do GIS work. We have now a housing program that we've stood up in the last few years in, in growth management as well. So, an economic development, that's a good one. So, um, kind of background on us, and then kind of getting into the project. So here's the map you guys can see on, on the screen. The MPO, and I don't think the pointer works on the, the, doesn't work on the screen. But you can see the four blue counties, that's the MPO, so that's the urbanized area, if you want to call it, and that's covered by the uh, Capital Region Transportation Planning Agency, CRTPA. I've learned a lot of acronyms at you. Planners love to put acronyms together. So it's very open. I, I feel free to shout out questions as we go or stop me or um, you know, clarify as we go forward, and that's fine. And then we have our five western counties, um, which have historically not been covered by any type of regional collaborative effort, um, which is hence the plan. So the plan, the goal of the plan is to outline each community's priority transportation projects and it will be identified basically for like the 20 and the 20 year planning horizon is kind of what we're looking at. So what are the, within the next 20 years, things that we know we might need to see and go forth. Um, we're going to break those projects down within, and the way this process works, so you know, every district receives funding for different kind of projects, whether it's your scrap scoff, your whatever, all those kinds of things, and then you set in your priorities, and then DOT kind of re-ranks those priorities based on where you're at, so by having the counties kind of come together to say, no, this is our number one priority for the region, this is our number one priority, you know, obviously I talk a lot about 
um, evacuation, because that's kind of near and dear to everybody's heart down here. A lot of the economic development, moving freight and goods, whether it's timber or whatever, that happens a lot down here too. Um, so those kinds of things. You know, we're just, so we're opening it up for a lot of, a lot of input. Um, but again, those, this five county group will prioritize projects that eventually go back to the district office where Franklin County's project might, might be number one on our, our plan, it may be number four in the district plan. You know, so they, and then they shell out money based on how they score and so forth. So um, I think that's how it works. I have worked for DOT, but I, you, know, you basically prioritize it based on um, a scoring rubric, which is what we're developing. So types of projects. Pretty much everything's up for grabs right now. I don't think anything's too small. Um, I will preface that by saying these types of programs are not into paving the dirt road in front of a house on a, on a small street. We're probably we're looking more at state roads, county roads, um, but there's probably, there may be some potential for you know, some, uh, some other types of roadways and things like that as long as it kind of ties into some of this stuff. So resurfacing projects, you know, I know we got caught on that as we were coming down on 98 over by uh, Clockney. Uh, capacity projects, a lot of times that may not be the case out here as far as your level of service with how, many, how much capacity you're able to flow through, um, you know, especially during peak hour. I know bridges is a big one. Connectivity, how do we connect to, you know, from, from the coast to other places? How do we get folks from the coast down here, you know, like we were talking about earlier, or from up there to the coast? Um, safety is a big one. I know that's a, a, big, a big star next to safety within DOT. Uh, Multi-use trails. I know there's the, there's the capital city, the sea trail, I think is what it's called. It's already working its way down through um, the bridge over there now. Park and ride lots. Uh, again, that's something we can talk about probably not too often down here. And then freight and rail movement. So uh, there is a little bit of rail that comes through, kind of comes from the port, comes through here, and then goes back up into, into Liberty County. But, you know, types of projects, kind of anything on here. Our timeline. So, again, this is our first phase one, phase one meeting. So we're thrilled to have everybody out here. Um, we're in the process of doing our public outreach for initial you know, information gathering throughout uh, February and, and March. We're going to sit back as a team, kind of review all our feedback, compile all that information, and come back again in later spring and summertime to make sure we've really encapsulated everything that we've talked about. Are we missing anything? What do we need to look at from there? Then we go into ranking the projects. We'll have a technical advisory committee that's composed of three representatives from each of the five counties. That'll go through and then say, okay, what are the projects we received? What are you know? How are we going to start scoring those? Um, and then we'll have the final plan wrapped up, hopefully uh, a little over a year from now. I think our deadline's the end of March uh, for that. So I'll probably be back again. I'm sure we'll do probably some workshopping, you know, with with uh, the elected official boards and so forth, just so everyone's familiar with it as we get closer to the finalization of that. So if you've got your smartphone, you can scan this QR code and it'll pull up. Uh, the GIS map for this project. Um, the, the map itself contains projects that are already in DOT's work plan. Uh, so I was just looking at it earlier. It's got the, the segments for the bike lane. It's got some resurfacing, I think, even over, uh, over the bridge onto, onto the island. It's got some resurfacing. Uh, I can't remember where it was now. I think the stuff on 98 is on there because it's already happening. Uh, so there's some things on there, and I can pull it up on the interactive thing here in a minute if we want to play with it and look at some things. Um, I just can't do it as part of the presentation, but there's a QR code on there if you want to look at, look at different projects. We don't want to re recreate and invite the same projects, so we'll double check with that, which brings us to the most important part of why we're here. So it's y'all's input. Um, yeah, we're planners. We think we have an idea of maybe what are some things that are important, but it really doesn't mean anything unless it's coming from you all. So. That's the big part of why we're here is to, is to talk with you all, get some engagement. There's a QR code up there if you want to go the fancy way. And the same thing is on those cards that when you walked in, it's basically like what are the projects on there if you want to fill one of those out instead. Um, or you can start shouting them out here in just a minute and we've got two scribes that are going to be scrambling to write all that stuff down, down as well. Uh, we want to really encapsulate the stuff that, you know, I come down here and enjoy the coast with my family or I come down and grab some seafood and it's amazing, but I don't know the day-to-day -day about you know, St. James Gate, uh, St. James Bay gets backed up or something with people trying to turn in, and maybe that's a big, you know, whatever that issue is. Um, I'm just throwing stuff out there, so don't quote me on a lot of that. Right. But stay, so stay connected. So um, the the technical advisory committee meetings, those we publicly advertise. You know, since we're under uh, a grant with DOT, we function under sunshine. You know, we've got to make sure all that those meetings are advertised. Members of the public are more than welcome to attend. 
Um, if you'd like us to come out and speak at any other any other organization to get this word out and get some, you know, whether it's a community traffic safety team, whether it's you know whatever it is, we're happy to come out and do that. So feel free to give us a call or email, text, smoke signal, whatever, whatever's easiest. We'll be happy to come out for that. Uh, we're working on scheduling. We just had a meeting yesterday in Apalachicola, and then now we're in Carabell today. Uh, so we'll just, that'll be our first two for phase one in the county. So we'll be back again in the late spring and early summer uh, to do a couple of additional meetings. Um, and then we actually have a web page for the entire project. So that's on there too. If you scan that QR code, I know there's a lot, a lot of QR codes, um, but that one will take you to the website. On the website is the form. You can click on that and fill it out electronically, and that'll come back to us for, for collection. Uh, with that being said, Again, I know we're trying to keep it brief, but I really want to open it up for discussion. That's really the meat of why we're here. So, you know, shout out, obviously, Rick, Marion, and myself are here, and then uh, Tanya Branton with DOT District 3 uh, is who we're working on at the district level. So I want to thank her for all her support with that as well. So with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to y'all. What are the hot button issues in Franklin? It can be countywide. I know you guys are here in Carabelle, so it might be on the east end of the county, but what are some things that if we're looking at a horizon to get included into a plan on down the road, what are some things that can be should be included in that? I've never been bashful. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. Uh, Quentin, the, uh, uh, first of all, can we put the map back up? Yeah, let me, let, me let me switch this off. If you guys don't mind me sitting, I don't want to group. I'll switch this off here and I can pull up the map. Yes, you? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, as the paving that's been done on 98 and also the uh, 319 mm -hmm. uh, is getting close to finish, it appears. Mm -hmm. But when you come through that split, the first thing you're going to see is uh, a, a subdivision that has turning lanes. And then the next subdivision you're going to come down to is St. James Bay. Right mm -hmm. there. there it is. All right. So. Uh, originally, my understanding is that development was going to have turning lanes. Uh, I'm not sure about a signal, and I'm not a traffic engineer, but uh, 10 years ago when I moved here, that issue there at that intersection was not a problem. But now we have a situation where this community is being built out, and if everybody in there bought two lots mm -hmm. and built a house on, we still over have over 200 residents there. That's not counting the traffic generated by the nursing, uh, the re, what do I call that? Uh, rehab. Rehab, rehab center. Well, the nursing home too. That's the one back up here? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so right now we've got a real issue because we've got concrete trucks, semi-trucks loads of material mixed in with the traffic. We've got a recreation area on the right-hand side of the road. I can't remember Jimmy's last name now, but it looks like he's going to build a house uh, in the middle of all those wrecked boats that he keeps there. And uh, so I don't know what the solution is, whether it's the turning lanes, whether it's a traffic light, whether it's warning of this approach, um, but that seems to be a, a, a clogged artery right there. Uh, and uh, we hear it from our homes. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, go ahead, Steve. Well, I'd say my house is about if you turn it make a right hand turn right there right here in St. James yeah right there you can almost see my house it's you see my roof right there and i hear it about oh twice a month the brake squealing okay. or somebody's making that left or that right and somebody's not paying attention mm -hmm. and then the blue there's been a few accidents um and it's getting worse because more and more people are moving in here right um we've got about 80 homes now mm -hmm. And, a homes and, and there's, there's four or five for sale. There are new ones that are empty, and they're just building them and building them and building them. Now they added six townhouses, and they're going to build 24 more townhouses. In and, it, and it's open to the play public. Golf to the public, you've got people coming in to play golf, golf. Restaurants there. So can I ask a qu uh, clarifying question? Mm -hmm. Are you are you saying both right and left hand turn lanes are needed? I don't, or is it a I can't tell. eastbound, westbound, or <clears> both? So like if I'm if I'm coming from this direction and I'm coming westbound, are you saying we need to cut in here to turn so that folks are slowing down in the cut in, or almost, from the other direction as almost well? Almost both. Both. Okay. Yeah. Um, when you're heading west, 
you, you've got to be cognizant to put your turn signal on well in advance so people slow up, particularly trucks. Right, so come When you're way. coming from the, when you're heading east towards Panacea, sometimes I've actually driven past our turn because there are some people, and I'll go clear down to summer camp to make that <coughs> turn because people will pass at that point too. So yeah, it doesn't the, the other thing we have is the, all the Tallahassee people bringing their boats down on Fridays. Yeah. And they just. Hey, now, I, see, I think that Tallahassee people think a little. Pretty. No, I love them. <laughs> they, my, my kids live up there. But, but, but I mean, it just, all the boats heading west. Right. You yeah. know, and then on Sundays, they're all heading back east again. Now, now that, and I'm, and I'm not a DOT safety officer, so, so don't quote me on the camera there, but that does seem like an interesting safety feature that you're still allowed to pass, right? Yeah, you shouldn't now. be not able allowed to pass. A double, a double yellow. I'm, don't, no one quote me in this room because that's not my thing, but that would be an interesting thing. Yes, madam. Okay, and then, and, and I'm Brenda, for those who don't know me. Um, I sit on the FDOT, uh, excuse me, the Franklin County Community Traffic Safety Team from okay. 2012 to 2020. Mm -hmm. Chaired it most all that time. We always met with once a month the FDOT uh, safety specialists and, and, and uh, safety engineers. Back in 2013, and I went back and checked my notes today, <clears throat> and I'll get into some of that later. Uh, but this was brought up as far back as 2013. Uh, and uh, in those meetings, uh, members of the community would come come mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. and uh, they were complaining about the safety of this. And I went out there to see it <coughs> then at the time. <coughs> and so now we're facing to the east right here. Facing, is that we're correct? facing east. Yeah. This is the main. At back then, that this was the main mm -hmm. point facing going headed east. All of the people driving east, there would. They, if someone would sl stop to turn north to go in there, then cars back up. They back up, the cars headed east, they pile up, they back up, they stop. Way back in the back, back towards the east, someone coming along at 60 miles an hour, really, they don't realize what's going on. They think it's just cars driving slow and they pull out to pass. Mm -hmm. And what they do, what what it was happening back then, they were pulling out in front of some, pulling out to pass, and they would <coughs> hit the car trying to turn north right. to go in. Now the rehab center is to the north, inside the same inside thing. Inside St. James Bay? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. yeah, you have to go in that road to get to it. Oh, okay. Okay. And, I thought there was another uh, And yeah. I had to, it was explained to us at that time that uh, a turn lane was supposed to be built in the middle of the road there for cars turning north that were headed to the east mm -hmm. to to pull to the to the side there and then be able to turn north so you would say you own, are you on property inside the the fence right yeah. it, do you guys know how much of this is right away on either it looks like this is still right away. <laughs> there's <laughs> right of way there yeah. yes now that that parking lot that you're seeing with the gray cars in it that's yeah. our recreation area so for St. James Bay. So when we have an event down there, or when people have a lot of visitors from out of state, that's where they go. So if it's you look, let's turn it out, yeah. and then coming down here a few yards, and then turning back left, Okay. I can see that turning into a nightmare. Uh, the uh, so, so that's overflow parking there, <coughs> essentially? Or are there people? That is, no. That, that, that is the parking. That is the parking. Inside that. Fence there is our is a park we own, oh, a waterfront yeah. park. Okay. And okay. and that when people use it, that parking lot is full. And then when they come back in the development, they got to cross the road here. So right now they're parked. Some of them are like Sunday, Steve. Some yeah. of them were parking on the. They're parking over there and then walking across Manny. That was going to be my next question. Is there is there a lot of foot traffic there to warrant a crosswalk? I mean, I don't see a sidewalk inside St. James Bay. No, there isn't. Well, no, the further in there is, but not further there. in, yeah. right? But it doesn't come out to the to yeah. the track. Yeah. I, I I know when we decided to put that there, Steve. The comments were, well, it sure would be nice just to walk down there. So far, I haven't seen anybody but me, <laughs> one other person walk down there. <laughs> Greg, oh, we walked, walked there. there. I walked there. Uh, but uh, the the traffic is is fairly fast there. Yeah, they fly by there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. including myself, like I'm sixty-five, guilty. easy. Yeah. Could could I um, interject a minute here? I own a home right off 98 East, past the golf uh, course, 
and I have the same issue if I'm pulling out of that home where somebody will start to pass somebody. Mm -hmm. I've looked both ways. I go to pull out. I almost got hit head on once. Mm -hmm. So I understand, you know, the more residents that move into St. James community, the more issues they're going to have. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> Now the reason I asked you to put that map up yeah. was because of those counties that you're looking at. Mm -hmm. Franklin County in 98 is unique for two reasons. First of all, when you're driving down one of the most beautiful stretches of shoreline between here in Apalachicola and back to Oglockney Bay, people are going like this. And you can see them drive to the you know. yes. and and uh, And I'm maybe one of the world's worst in that. But the other issue from a traffic point of view and on a long-term 20-year basis is um, your, your development area for Franklin County between here and East Point is not that deep mm. because we have Tate's Hill back there, we have Apalachicola Forest back there, right, right. Uh, and, that, and that is true all the way from the bay basically into um, East Point. Uh, so that that's a problem. Now the problem that uh, I'm getting to the 20-year problem, you know, as opposed to an, um, what I consider an immediate problem. We have a lot of people in the county. If, if you go back and look at the median income in this county, it is, it is low. It's come up, but it's still low. So people, not only the elderly, but other people, um, they, they don't have a way, there's no, I mean, you, you, you're going to Uber from Carabelle to Tallahassee, I don't think so. Uh, there's no real public transportation of any kind uh, that I know of. Uh, and at some point, the population is going to get enough because we have these, uh, I call them invasive tourists, that come down here and bring money. Our job is to fleece them and send them back north, but that nevertheless, they're here. <laughs> Not a uh, <laughs> uh, Not kidding, of course, but uh, it is a it is a growing problem as more and more people come here, and we have so many visitors that are elderly, that are retired, uh, because you know all you have to do is look at the RV parks that we have on 98. So uh, there's definitely safety problems and growth problems associated with uh, 98, and. To me, that's one of the um, big immediate problems. And the other thing that I would mention, you, you had trail, and I'll put this in comments if that's what you want us to do, but uh, the other issue we have is as you go on down 98, mm -hmm. you're going to come to two other recreation areas. One of them is on the bay side, which is Island View Park. The other side. That one's coming right in here, right? That new one? That's coming uh, from? Yeah, that's the yeah, new one. Yeah, yeah. New one. So Island View, but just right down the road, you have a right-hand turn where you go to the, the city's recreation area, okay? Well, one of the things that has been talked about is having a trail that moves from Island View down to the recreation area. And then we even talked about extending that trail farther so that it came <coughs> down on the scenic. That's this one, the sports center here you're talking about? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. And so if you come on down, then, here. then you go on down to the bypass. And the, the idea behind that particular trail was not only to give people an opportunity to see wildlife and the other things we have to offer in, terms, in those terms, but also to bring them back around into the city as a method of economic development because the trail would come down, hook up with that road, that scenic bypass, and then bring them right back into the intersection at Highway 98. In the is that called the Ave here? Is that where the bypass goes? The, the, is it the byway? The big business mm -hmm. byway? Uh, I don't know that it has a name. It's just... Uh, is that that one that runs along the, the coast? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, scenic, the scenic byway is 98. I just didn't know. Yeah, you it's, said it's when you come off way. this way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is where you're coming. You, you guys have a trail here? No, no. We, we talked about a trail there. Okay. So... Uh, Let me switch back over here real quick and take a look. They were working on 
So this is what they currently have listed. This pink one here is a bike pedestrian improvement that they're looking at, that they funded in 2028, and that comes down to just past Lake Moriarty, Moral, Moral, Moral Road. Road. Sorry. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm getting old and I don't have glasses on right now. <laughs> um, but this is a this is part of I, I this is the I think the Sun Trail Network. I was just talking with the MPO guys yesterday, Tuesday. Tuesday I had a meeting with him. And he was like, Have you heard about that one that's going into Franklin County? I said, I hadn't heard that one yet. And he did he sent me some of the literature on it, but I haven't Yeah, I had yet. not I did not know that they already had that on the drawing board, which and is that great. Goes, that goes where? So this so the capital city to the sea trail was originally that came all the way from um, um, Tallahassee all the way down through Wakulla, and now they've started connecting. I, I know you've seen on the other side of O'Clock, you know, the right-hand right, side right. of that multi-use path. I think they're trying to connect that from where that's going to come down here by the bridge, and now this is a segment, a bike, I don't know what exactly what it is, but it's a bike pedestrian improvement, which is a bike path slash a trail, it's funded in 2025. The next segment from Third, from US 98 from State Road 330, 377 to County Road 370 is also funded bike ped trail in 2025. And that gets us to the interchange, or I'm sorry, the, where it connects. And this next segment is also funded in 2025 from Crooked River to U of 319, 2025. And, and that this, should and get this to piece, the island view. And then this piece, yeah, right by Lanark is 2025. And this one, well, this is 2025. Why did I zoom closer? It said 2028 a second ago. You guys saw that, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe it's two parts. Let's see. There's one the the PD and E, and one is the actual construction. It, it might be that whole length is funded over those three years. Is my view? Is my view? And, and from 25 to 28. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how far does it go? So right now, it's where do, where does this connect? Where it ends right here. Close to the next nearest road. Oh, so we're coming down almost to Island View, it looks like. It's right here in the shoreline. It's got to be getting close. It's, it's got to be close. Okay, it's past it. Yeah, go so, back. Yeah, that's so about where it is. Where that, there's a park symbol right there. Isn't it? Right, this is, yeah, two different maps. I was just trying to figure out where oh. this and the GIS map had it. No, I think Island View's down here. So we're okay. a little short. It looks like a little short. I think we're yeah. making it to Lanark, but not quite. All yeah, the but by the time they get there, it'd be like a mule going to the barn to get through Carabelle. But again, and that's that's, that's, that's still on there, you know. So that would be the next thing that on that list could be connecting into the existing trail and extending it out. Because that's the, the argument I think is going to be made is well, there's no existing trail now, but if we say okay, let's put it you know, four years out, we, it's going to be here, and then we want it, you know, to continue. We right. Just stop it. What's the trail? Stop. That trail name is that the Barry? Uh, Barry Jack sent me the uh, the name of it. I forget exactly what it was called, but it was. I think it connects back to the capital city to the Sea Trail. So they talk about extending that further. As, as part but that of what, right? But that's out of the CRTPA boundary. That's why he had said, "Have you guys heard of that?" Because I don't know if it got funded through Sun Trails or um, how, who, or how that got funded. I'm not, I'm unsure about. I just heard about it two days ago, though. And then some of the Sop Topic people said they were planning a trail back down to where 319 forks, uh, all the way down to the Gulf. But I haven't seen any plans. Of well, they've got the one down Surf Rotary, don't they? So they're continuing mm -hmm. down 319 through the forest? No, they're coming. Well, yeah, they're com that, that goes from uh, out the east side of uh, Sop Topic. I think it's 11 miles from there to the Gulf. Right. And then they've... Then that one ties to the one east and west, which you're talking about. Yes, sir. And this one is going to supposedly going to extend from Sop Choppy and coming down 319 out of going, Sop Choppy. Going the other way. Okay. Okay. But that may be way off in the distance. I don't. I don't know that. Don't know. Sure. Okay. Let's see if we got that in here. No, I don't see it on the on the plans. Yeah, because that other one runs right here. Yes. Yeah, that other trail. Yeah. And I'll try to get. Some things that have already been laid out, maybe to save y'all a headache to agree. <laughs> uh, in terms of connecting with other right. counties, is what mm -hmm. we're talking about.
and another one here, it looks like it's on there. They have a resurfacing project funded, to, whoa, which one's which here? Operation Routine Maintenance. A resurfacing project basically from the stretch from Caravel from the, from the bridge all the way down, which I know some of that's pretty bumpy. They kind of slapped a band-aid right. on that after the storm. Right, all right. Oh, okay. So it looks like they've got that in the plans for resurfacing project already, either eventually 2025 through 2019 <coughs> maintenance. Resurfacing in 25, and then some routine maintenance in 29, whatever that means. Sorry, yeah. So I, I have a couple questions. During, the, um, during our hurricanes, there's a backup. Uh, work around that goes past my house uh, on River Road, but the uh, are they going to pave that through uh, Tate's Hill? Where's that? What the you go down. You go. It's it's a bypass to take you to three sixty seven. Yeah. The dirt road. Right. It's the highway sixty five. Yeah, the one yeah. at East Point. Yeah. East Point? Yeah, there's a there's back road. Tate's Hill. Yeah. I don't it's a Forest Service road. Right. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not a designated bypass. It's a Forest Service road. It's called Tate's Hill and North Road that the forest allows to be used when 98 between Caravelle and East Point is washed out. Right. Okay. Did you guys get that? The name of it? Oh, the name of the forest road is Buck Siding and North Road. Yeah. Thank you. And it's our escape North road. road right here. This one. Excuse me. <laughs> it's our yes. escape road. That's, it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the fire road. Fire it's how we get back and forth. From 265. Yeah. That's correct. So, so one of the <coughs> questions is, now, no, if it's because. River Road is kind of like St. James and probably most of the places in, in Carabelle. Um, we have logging trucks that are going up and down that road constantly and pulling out right before the, the bridge. River Road comes out and, and it ends at the bottom of the bridge. Um, or, you know, the bottom yep. of the bridge. And it's a really, it's, it's, it's a very dangerous spot there. Mm -hmm. um, for, for everybody. Um, there are no um, um, sidewalks on that road either. Um, I, I, I on on was, River Road or 98? River Road. Okay. And I was told that that, that that had been discussed and they were working on it, but I haven't been useless. Yeah. I haven't heard anything else about that. Um, You can see it. it looks like either someone's ran off the road here or a lot of people walk on it, one of the two. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's very tight. It's, uh, but there's okay. a lot of development that's going on back there. But I guess, yeah. so, so my, you know, one of my concerns is that uh, we do have a disaster plan that's feasible for, for us to use. Um, so I don't know if you need to work with the forestry to make sure that stays in good working shape. Okay. That that was kind of my one thing. And does anybody remember um, sidewalks on River Road? There was a planning meeting that was held at the uh, the, the big that church would, down there. That would be on the county side. That yeah. that is a county road. Uh, so you would have to reach out to the county about that. They, that has been brought up off and on over the years. But uh, there's no, uh, generally when sidewalks are put in, they want to put the sidewalks where pedestrians are going somewhere to a park or to a grocery store or to, mm -hmm. to a bus stop or something. And there's no real place uh, for pedestrians to be walking to uh, on, go, headed north on River Road is the way I've heard it described to me. Okay, so I can, I can yeah. work with the county. And then generally the side, you know, if the sidewalk's coming down to a 
a main road, it would need to be uh, connecting with the sidewalk on the main road as well. Or a multimodal path, something yeah. like that. But the county, we, you would okay. need to uh, contact your county commissioner. Okay. Well, would wouldn't you, that be something that you could do as work with the forestry to pave the road um, uh, back there so that it might be a little bit safer during hurricanes? Because when it's raining and we right. have a hurricane, I mean, sometimes when you're trying to go out that way, I'm not kidding, like, you're, I feel like my tires are two feet deep in a, mm -hmm. in a rut because the roads aren't used to being used. Right. And I mean, when you run through, and of course now you have a hundred people that are now using it all right. in the same day. And we don't all have four-wheel drive. Yeah. <laughs> but generally, I was just curious. Those situations, the forestry steps in and, and keeps them maintained mm -hmm. better. You know, because they are right. forest roads. It, I, it's highly unlikely that it's something that would ever be paid. Well, or even like gravel, like extra, you know. Yeah, we, I, but, I think that'd be something we'd have to get back and talk. I don't know whose jurisdiction that is between, because is that I think it's that's national? A uh, state forest. Okay. State, state, state forest. forest. That's state. So I don't know if that's a if DOT has any ability to get in there or if we have to get the forest a little bit. Like I, I mean, there's some roads that are paved in the forest, right? 65 and all that is paved through it. Mm -hmm. um, that would, that would be there is the material in the forest um, that you could. Um, put limestone down if yeah. the Forest Service wanted to do that. The problem is, the, you know, cost. mining, well, it's uh, cost, but a, a mine in a forest is permanent, basically. Mm. So, uh, I don't know, I don't think it's going to hurt them, and I think it makes a good route. People have to go to work, they have to get to the island, mm -hmm. you know, so uh, if, if, that, if 98's not there, how do you do it? And that's the only way I know to do it. Uh, and that's where I was going. It's just such a narrow band there uh, for development before you begin to deal with the feds, and that lets go the National Forest, or the state, and takes hell. That draws in the Forestry Service, and you know, it, it makes y'all's job a little more difficult. <laughs> I think I have one in the back, real quick. And then we'll, uh, well, I'm actually here to talk about the crosswalk at 98 Marine Street. That's my a uh, big issue. That is a huge, huge safety issue. Um, I work on the corner at Costa Rilly, and I sit there and I hear the horns blow, the mm -hmm. brakes squeak. I watch people try to get across there. Yes. Nobody ever stopped because they cannot see the flashing lights, number one. Yeah, and I, I I've been to the point where right I there walk also. out there. Yes. Yes. But I walk out there, I sit there, and I see people trying to get across, and I go out there and I push the button, and I will stand in the middle of the street and stop traffic both ways, and I still have people come by. Yeah. Those lights are useless. Yeah. They are totally yeah. useless. Yeah. And I have seen so many people almost get run over there, and that is a huge, huge and issue that needs to be addressed and in my opinion it needs to be addressed immediately yes because summer's coming up yeah people that is the somebody's gonna get area. hurt there's kids crossing all the time the and people walking to the shops back and forth mm -hmm. and yeah, just out walking the gym mm -hmm. and it is a very very big issue <clears throat> Uh, and, yeah. and I, well, I there, want people, to. Is there a people hit that now? button, and they they think <laughs> that when they hit the button, that gives them the right of way, mm -hmm. like immediately. I'm not kidding. I we I sat there because I it doesn't say taste of green out, but the building to the right on the screen that's taste of green above the waffle factory. And I'm telling you, we have sat there, and I'm like, I cannot believe. Not. I mean, they hit the button, and they just start walking, and mm -hmm. I mean, cars go. And you hear it. I mean, there's been a there's been an accident be dead. because of it because be somebody sorry. has broke and then this person's got rear-ended because the people they they in their mind they really think that when when they hit that button and those lights start flashing that means go. So, and so the thing is, a, is is the pedestrian, if I'm not mistaken, does have the right of way. Right. Okay. But here's the thing. I've also even seen them do this. I've seen a car obey the traffic light, they see it, and they stop. 
But then somebody's coming from behind them and they come out and go around. Yep. And mm -hmm. somebody's seen that in the street. Awesome. Somebody's crossing the street. Somebody's crossing the street. And it's a double yellow line. It's a double yellow line. Look, it's a double yellow line. 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 I know. I know. I don't know. And nobody's ever in there. I have a follow-up question. This is a great opportunity for planning discussion. What would you all like to see there? I think you go all the way and get a light, light yes. or you full, don't, full because traffic I think signal. they're confused. Mm -hmm. I don't know I think if they have full traffic, but if you even just had what they did out at, uh, oh. at the beach, go that's ahead, so much oh, more yeah. visible. Oh, you got yeah, to have something nice. that's more yeah. visible. Yeah. There. There's a crosswalk with lights. a red light. No, with a red light. So when you hit the button, light. Light. And, yeah, and, like and, and they do light. have a red light when you hit the button. Okay. It takes a few seconds. It's a hawk pedestrian. Right. Safety. Gotcha. Yeah. And, those, and, uh, those but Commissioner Millender right. wanted to speak, and then I do ask Sorry, Commissioner Millender. Sorry. Well, just to give some clarification on it, is uh, the Hawk, which has just recently been installed at, at the Carabell Beach. Mm -hmm. It oh, has that beach. Yeah, excuse that's me. That's awesome. Yes. Sorry, when you said beach, I was thinking the island, but we drove past that yesterday. Ah, yes. I said this is new. Mm -hmm. I literally yeah. saw it yesterday. Yeah. I think it's awesome. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. That's fine. What happened at the Hawk? When you press the button over there, it stays green over there. The light does at the hawk. Just like you do at a traffic light in Tallahassee, but it stays green until a pedestrian mashes the button. And when they mash the button, it goes to red. Mm -hmm. So it stops the traffic. Exactly. But the one that these ladies are describing here at the intersection of Caravelle, Highway 98 and 67 and Marine Street, mm -hmm. it's just an amber flashing. I don't know what the name yeah, of it is. Yes, on it's, four corners. But, so when you yeah. hit it, you look, it looks like um, police are coming. But it's just, not really because you can't see them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're done to you right on top of yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. It's on the side of the road and it's not noticeable. It's down here at the beach. Uh, no. It's something that I would no. feel like no. the one at the intersection would be more applicable at the beach. And the one that they've installed at the beach would be more applicable yes. at the intersection. Yes. 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 I, when we, we drove by it yesterday, I uh, looked at it, we were kind of driving, driving through, you know, it's been a few months since I've been back down, and I was like, that's new as I drove by it, and then I saw the, the sidewalk went right across the crosswalk, and then right to, to no sidewalk to get to the beach. I was like, well, that's something maybe we need to add a little bit of the sidewalk right there, but I guess if you're in your flip-flops, you can walk on the, on the sand. Well. Now, but I mean, there's no reason for that to turn red if there's no, if there's no one crossing. Right, exactly. It's, it's, and then it's very visible, and, I, and the question, I guess, and I, I don't want to get back to the mayor, but uh, someone had said, talked about the hawk being pretty pricey, right? It is. I, I, I don't understand how they got that because they were requesting the county, the county commissioner requested through FDOT a simple crosswalk. And I can tell you through the traffic <coughs> safety team that a crosswalk has been requested out there for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, oh, it yeah, morphed, really, yeah. it, yes, at that uh, Carabell Beach crossing. And, and a crosswalk with warning signs have, have been needed there for years and years. But uh, that's what it morphed into. Um, and also, uh, we would get comment <coughs> over the years on the traffic safety team, public comments and requests for some type of a, an enhanced crosswalk here, you know, uh, identification here, oh, right here in downtown yeah. Carabell, because it, it was needed as well. Um, I, it's a very expensive system they got out there. I don't know, you know, uh, if, if the public thinks that they need something more like Commissioner Millender and Miss, Miss Ruby Litton has mentioned, then, you know, maybe you all should write that in your plan or con let the FDOT know. We certainly don't need to wait 20 years, though, mm -hmm. for something well, it here. Well, sounds like you've already got power out there because it's blinking lights. So mm -hmm. power is already there. It's just uh, a... We have power yes, here. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Well... When I was describing the application of the two, or seeing the necessity of the two, the one at the beach is only serving that RV park mm -hmm. and the rest mm -hmm. and the and mm -hmm. the people there at that RV park crossing 98 and going to the beach. That's what it's servicing. Mm -hmm. The one at this intersection of 67 98 Marine Street is in serving the entire community. Right. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. And, and all the, the visitors. Mm -hmm. And yes. there are sidewalks there downtown. If you're, if you're crossing, generally you don't cross, have a mid-block crosswalk where there's no sidewalk. And that's what they did out there. They actually had to develop and construct a little bit of sidewalk so they could justify right. putting a crosswalk.
And also it should be noted that Marine Street is the boat launch. So it's a highly trafficked yep. yes. area. Yes. Very highly trafficked area. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, well I just <clears throat> want to say that I, I grew up in a, a kind of a seasonal area. And the summertime is a really busy time. you got people crossing back and forth, going to the beaches and, and such and such. And, uh, but in the summertime, uh, they change at, at seasonally. Let, 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 they usually sometime around Memorial Day to get people used to it. Uh, middle mid-May. They would drop the, the speed limits from 35 to 25. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's easier to stop at 25 than 35, so it's not so abrupt. And they would that would that would go on for a long period of time where there was a lot of crossovers, and then in the off season, they would go back to the normal 35. Mm -hmm. You know, so people could get around town. They don't they, they know town and get around it again. But um, the crosswalk thing becomes a uh, a huge issue because, uh, but believe it or not, where I, where I live, people in the winter time are actually worse at crosswalks than people in the summertime. People in the summertime, just because of the traffic, they're more aware of their surroundings and would be stopping. Not only because they would be stopping because they were aware of it, but law enforcement was pretty tough on, on anybody that was breaking through crosswalks with people in it. You know, they were pretty well watched, warned ahead of time. But uh, that's just my only point would be they slowed the traffic down for for those 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 dense in, those dense sections, and then in the off season they open it back up because people know how to get around town and they don't have to drive 25. Right. And you know, so that's my point. The other thing is that Highway 98 is a through traffic, so it's not just local traffic that it moves mm -hmm. from Tallahassee yeah, a, all the way to you know yeah. to yeah. St. George Island, Appalachia, Cape Sandline, and. Putting turn lanes in for all the traffic and everything, like they're saying, people will turn and go around past someone. I can be driving 55 miles an hour and doing the speed limit, and people go by me like I'm standing still. And it doesn't matter whether there's a double yellow line or not. <coughs> Something needs to be done about that. That's, the, that's the one thing I don't think we can control is the human element with that. I've seen that folks go around with double yellows. It's oh, like, no, legal, right? It's all but the time. Yeah. Unless there's like a little thing that's possible. And pops in the summer, in the summer, summer when, yeah. when we have all the, the tourists coming down to go to St. George Island, etc., etc., <coughs> it's worse. It's worse. Did you have something you wanted to add, Commissioner? Yeah. I, I do. I, I want to move away from the crosswalks. <laughs> yeah, I, I was just going to say, I was, look, I was looking at the time, and uh, yeah, I know there's some... We, we may be, we may be uh, kind of the old saying, barking up the wrong tree. You may not be the exact uh, okay. right. agency, right. but I do feel like that you are, you have some merit here. And, and we, we would appreciate, and I know you're listening to what our concerns are and we appreciate that but something I haven't heard mentioned yet tonight and that uh, concerns me and maybe it's already in the works and it's my shortcoming that I haven't checked with DOT is the resurfacing of Carabelle from the Carabelle Bridge to East Point has been mentioned we know it's been coming for quite some time mm -hmm. and I understand that project's going to start as soon as they finish up with the shore uh, enhancement between Carabelle or between Yance Bio and East Point. Uh, the yeah. paving from the Carabelle Bridge to the 31998Y east of Carabelle. I've not heard that mentioned at all. That road is not in good condition which, at all. Which one, Commissioner? I'm sorry. From the Car from the east end of the Carabelle Bridge Going by us. Okay. to Summer Camp. Yeah. Yeah. I've not heard that one mentioned at all. I know that they, they are completing from summer camp to the O'Clotney River Bridge now as, a, as we speak. But I've not heard anything about the section from the east end of Carabelle Bridge to summer camp. So you're talking from here back up to here. 
back up to the split. Yeah. Yeah. Back up. We so, call it the Y. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Yep, I don't see it on here. And that road is not in good condition. Actually, uh, Caravel, and I'm, 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 I'm representing Caravel, in the city limits of Caravel, when we get, when we receive a little bit of rain, mm -hmm. it's very dangerous to drive through Caravel because you're driving through two channels of water mm -hmm. about six inches deep. We've had, we've lost a brand new city police vehicle because of that water, mm -hmm. or it totaled, it hydroplaned and totaled with one of our officers responding mm -hmm. to a call. Where, where are those two at? You said in downtown Caravel? It's, it's, it's right through downtown Caravel. Uh, if you go from uh, yeah. the main intersection out to the bridge, there's yep. deep ruts, yep. like like wagon trains, trails, yep. uh, oh, in each lane. you're saying in the traveling, not coming across uh, 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 yes, the road. in the, the travel. Right. Through the you travel. drive through. I, hear, I hear what you're saying. I mean, it's yeah. like yeah. you're in a wagon train trail. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that start right at the city limits? Excuse me? Yes. From, from, from right at the city limits to the bridge. No, from the bridge, bridge to Marine to Street. Mm -hmm. uh, but downtown, it's, it's bad downtown. But downtown, you're talking about, I, I had the first one, but downtown, you're talking about yeah, down to Marine Street. And the so they're saying this chunk right, right here, from, from the bridge on the east side of the bridge all the way back up to the Y. That's so correct. That, chunk, yeah. that I had, but I didn't know. Then I, I had the water as a separate issue, but the deep water through Carabelle. In town. Issue. Okay, and those go from Highway 67 and 98 to the Carabelle Bridge. Right. Okay. I think that's been some really great. And I have some city streets to mention, but you told me up front that they're <laughs> yeah. not going to go anywhere. Uh -huh. so. And I, I've got a couple of things I want to uh, put out there, but I'll send you a whole bunch I, of stuff. We have nowhere to be Thank after, you. after this, so if you guys, All right. you know, I don't, I don't want to keep um, anybody that wants to leave in a couple of minutes. I do have before, to mm -hmm. I noticed some people have already left. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to bring up something for the future, which I know you got my slideshow. Mm -hmm. And it, it also concurs with this gentleman here that talked to, touched on it. Yeah. Is obviously I opened a business here four years ago. Mm -hmm. I've had horrible luck trying to get employ, employees. I can't pull from a lot of areas in Franklin County as a workforce because there is no real public transportation. Mm -hmm. And I would like to see a long-term goal. I mean, I'd love it to be short-term. Um, but I'm going to come to your following meetings as well. Um, but a bus transport system and not one that you have to qualify for, mm -hmm. but a real public bus transport system that will connect Panama City all the way to Tallahassee as a regular route, maybe mm -hmm. a couple of times a day, so that we can bring workforce in and out. Um, and I think that's a real need for this rural county. As you know, in Carabao, we don't even have a pharmacy. So if you don't qualify for one of these special programs, right. let's say your car just breaks down, mm -hmm. I can't get to CVS. There's no taxis really here. Right. So I think that's a really big need mm -hmm. for Franklin County. And it also for education, child care, recreation, it could bring people in for the day from Tallahassee that want to enjoy our beautiful dog-friendly beach, which is awesome. So I think there's a lot of reasons it could maybe save car traffic on 98. Um, there's a lot of benefits that this community could serve, service, and not just this community, but East Point, mm -hmm. Appalach, yeah. Crawfordville. I mean, all of those together could be serviced by this one solution. So I think that's really important. And I wanted to just make sure I at least bring it up. Um, and if we can somehow combine in our transportation system in this rural area with some grant money and FDOT monies that I know you saw my slideshow, so you saw where I saw where that can be possible. I just wanted to bring that up here briefly, and then I'll keep exploring it. Sure. Since we have the mayor here, commissioner, um, I will give you 
an example of what we did in the community called Brentwood, Tennessee. We had a little bit different problem, but the problem basically was we could not find employees. So the Chamber of Commerce, the city got together. We bought two vans to start, and we raided communities. We'd, get, we, we'd, go to another, we'd go to another community and advertise for jobs, and we provide the transportation into Brentwood and back home. And that made all the difference because what happened eventually over about a four-year period is we were bringing people's income up because they could not make the money that we were paying in Brentwood. Mm -hmm. These people bought cars and they drove themselves to work. Mm -hmm. you know? So it was, a, it was a solution that as bizarre as it started. It started off Brentwood was going to buy a trolley mm -hmm. to go around the city. Mm -hmm. And we, we found one at another community had trolleys that we were going to buy. But then we said, well, that, that really doesn't stop. This is not necessarily a tourist destination. We need, we need educated employees. We, need all, we needed all kinds of employees. Right. And, and, but Nashville was sucking them all away. Right. Or Franklin, Tennessee was sucking them all right. away. So we had to go out and basically we raided. And <laughs> to that point, I come from Key West, so I come from Monroe County. Okay, we had a bus route from Homestead to Key West that was several times a day, so you could pull employees. And they'd have a way there and back. Yeah. And they'd have, because right. you can't just do a one way mm -hmm. right. twice a day. That doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You have to have more than one route going back and forth with this bus. Um, so I understand, I appreciate what you're saying. And we're only talking 118 miles or something. They're talking a couple hundred miles. But we had workforce that pulled from Homestead that left early in the morning and went all the way to mile marker 30 and worked our Winn-Dixie and our shops. So I know it can be done. It's the funding that's the issue. And that's where I'm hoping that um, grant money and whatever we can um, get could be of service. Now, did you get grant money or did you... Yes, yeah. ma'am. We sat down and put that organization together. We had a young lady, um, and she wrote the um, uh, request, mm -hmm. and we got, I'm trying to remember what the grant was, the first grant we got. Uh, I, think, I think we and started out at 130 and they went to 500000 I think. And, so, and, and, so, and the rides were free at that point? Yes, the rides were yes. free. Okay. Uh, and of course, we had the support of the chamber because they, we were desperate for employees, all of us were. And uh, so that worked out well for them. There are other traffic issues that they had um, that had to do with the interstate. And we only had one entrance in and one entrance out of the city at that time. We now got an interchange put in, so that all worked out well. And I well. could see that as a short term solution if the chamber and other small businesses got together and, uh, you know, did that kind of suggestion. But as for a long-term so solution, especially when you see the explosion of Crawfordville right now, yeah. you see the expansion of Tallahassee, mm -hmm. I think there, you know, you need to look into that future. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, we're, so yours were complimentary yeah. The so, trip from Homestead to Key West, do you remember, was there a... Was there that a, was, no, a regular metro you paid. Mm -hmm. no, the, it, it was a route that you, you paid to use? Yeah. Okay. We used vans and the, um, um, the people got a job in transportation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, now what amazed us at first is some people made it three days before all the <laughs> right. But But See, in the long term, it yeah. provided Because my issue employment. with that is you're talking about probably a one, one way and the one way back kind of situation. And eventually you're going to need to have those buses going more than just once a day because you can't expect somebody right. to be at work Everybody at 7 and then they got to wait till a certain time before they can leave. And I think from people I've talked to, that's part of the problem with your... Uh, I don't, I, I'm sorry, I don't remember the acronym. Oh, the transportation is advantage. Yeah, is it, it's a one-time shot where they get on in the morning, they transport them there, yeah. and then they all have to come back at the same time. Yeah. I can, and I can that's share, a, 
I could shed some light on that, and and I don't want to keep the captive audience for too long. But if anybody's interested, you know, that I've been working on that program for eight years, and, and just like you guys were saying, having trouble finding staff, they're in the same issue. You know, since they do um, ADA ADA transportation, complementary transportation, there's federal dollars. That employees have to pass level two background checks, CPR certification, and then there, so their pots a lot, you know, oftentimes even smaller to draw from. And the salaries they're paying aren't that much more than yeah. McDonald's or, or Burger King. Yeah. You don't have to pass a level two background check for burgers. Um, so there, there are some shortfalls there that make it difficult. Um, the funding side, you know, there I can I can think of a few things that are out there that are, are potentials, but we obviously have to have either buy-in from the municipalities, buy-in. There was a success story years ago, Gadsden County. Um, they set up an express route from Quincy to Tallahassee. You know, and that was called the Gadsden Express. And it's now since they have now four routes in Gadsden County because they were able to prove ROI on, for every every dollar you spent on transit, it brought $3 back in the community. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So people would go to Tallahassee work at their paycheck and the bus stop is outside of Pink Wiggly and folks went in and spent money, your tax revenue went up, all that. And there's a whole study that went into it. I mean, that's probably now 15 years ago. Well, I mean, I'm almost wondering if, the, you know, if it behooves the employer to pay the yearly bus uh there's, there's there's that and another side to that coin another pro program that we work on at the RPC it's a commuter assistance program it's called ride on mm -hmm. um, we've been trying to get out into the communities promote that more mm -hmm. it was kind of more held in Tallahassee area even though it was for the region um, we since brought that into our fold in 2020 and then COVID happened and it was two years really of not much happening there's people working from home not really working but that program is a you know, you can log your trips on, a, on your app on your phone, and you can look for van pools and carpools and say, I'm in, I'm, I live in Carabell, but I'm driving to Tallahassee every day. Is there anybody else? And maybe you pick up someone in Panacea, or you pick up someone in Sopchoppy on your way north, you split the cost of gas, and you've got someone that's driving. And that is kind of even more grassroots getting, okay, we, we now have three van pools of 15 people going from here to here. Well, maybe we could just get one bus, you know, and do that. Um, so there's there's some other things that we can maybe get with just to say what's out there you know a lot to promote what's currently there. I would I love public transportation. I think it's fantastic. It would be if it didn't if it didn't take me in Tallahassee an hour and twenty minutes to get to my office, it's twenty minutes from my house on transit. I'd probably take it more often. But um, you know in Europe and whatever trains, planes, automobiles, you know all that's all that's awesome. So. The, the idea, I think, is fantastic. I think that would be something that would be, I've, I've plugged that to other places where it's like, you've got the white gold down here that folks are gonna wanna come down to. You know, that, that's an opportunity for economic development and things like that. I don't know how you keep sand off the bus or keep the bus clean, you know, at that point, that's a, a, an issue for another day, you know, to, to figure out. Um, but as far as that, Having a, either a fixed route or even some kind of deviated fixed route, where if you are have a, a, a disability of some kind, the vehicle can come off and come in three blocks, you know, down, you know, Marine or wherever, you know, downtown, pick up somebody at their home, and then come right back out and keep coming, you know, along the way is is, is something there. I I'm I'm a hundred percent in your court on that. No, as, I as understand. a transportation planner, that's yeah. like the mecca. I would love to have. Regional, true regional. I've I've talked about it more specifically on twenty, from Blunstown, Bristol, Hosford, and Tallahassee. You know that's a straight shot too. I mean, I yeah. it's straight enough. It's just a little curvy, but yeah. um, you know what I'm saying. So like, yes. I think that opportunity exists out there. Yeah. Um, I think Franklin honestly probably has the better chance because your population is, like you said, south of the forest. You've got this little swath, and that's pretty much where. The majority of everybody is within probably a mile off of 98. I would say is what 85, 90 percent of the population, maybe. I don't know. Within, within a couple can miles. Answer that better than I can. Yeah. Don't want to keep everyone here, but it's a good conversation. And this is not. This is more for Franklin County. Well, it actually benefits the city of Carabell residents mm -hmm. and the folks in this eastern part of the county. Hasn't been mentioned, and I've I've tried to uh, to uh, discuss it and and promote it for quite a number of years. Highway 67 going out of Carabell northward. That's the only north escape route that this end of the county has. True escape route, because 
98 going east, 98 going west, automatically gets washed out right up front. Mm -hmm. So Highway 67 is the only true escape route for storms that this eastern part mm -hmm. has in the Carabelle area. Mm -hmm. I've, I've tried to, I've tried to yeah. talk it up for that Highway 67 to be improved. It has been a narrow uh, southbound lane and northbound lane. I'm 70 years old and it's been that way as long <laughs> as I can remember. But anyway, long story short, if nothing, that highway, there's 41 miles of it till you get from Carabelle to Hosford, which is where Highway 20 is at. Right. And you have open corridor when you get there, or either you go a few miles north or you're on Interstate 10. Mm -hmm. yeah. So anyway, Highway 67 desperately needs to be improved. I know in the last year that Liberty County, I don't know where their funding came from, but they have widened, I would say, maybe half of it that's in Liberty County. They've widened it and resurfaced it. Seems to be, it, it, it's a whole lot better. But there's still a small section of it in, Li in Liberty County uh, and a section in Franklin County from the county line down to the Crooked River it needs to be improved and widened. But anyway, 67 needs that attention for that purpose, if nothing else. Mm -hmm. Capacity-wise, is, is two lanes sufficient for the amount of residents and, and so forth, as opposed to probably so. I don't, capacity. I don't, I don't think it's 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 up to four lanes yet. You're running yeah. through the forest. Yeah, yeah. So, right. yeah you're running 41 miles through Apalachicola National and Tate Hill State Forest. Yeah. And I just want to follow up on yes. that. Uh, and I sent you all information today already where I worked with the ARPC uh, back in 2019, April and May. You might have been I was, there then. I, I was there. And uh, got all kinds of letters of support. The FDOT did come back and report to the, um, and you can get you can get that information reported to the ARPC. Uh, but we, we need this <laughs> as well as an escape route on the eastern side. We need an interchange up there uh, on 10 because when we get up there on 65 or 67, it's a big cluster on 20. Traffic is at a standstill. They're going east or west because they can't go straight on 65 at that point to have it to an interchange. They've got to go one way or the other. And uh, those evacuating um, before Michael, it was, it was a big disaster up there. Yeah. So if we're sending people up there, we've got to have a place for them to go when they... I 100% agree with you. Okay. I do know that, the, and the reasons that I'm sure you know for the, for the folks in the room, as I understood it, when it came back, you know they've got a a code that they follow when it comes to um, volume, depending on what your classification is. So at that part of I-10, it was considered rural, mm -hmm. and their their code, I guess, every if you will. six miles. You can't have it. It can't uh -huh. have an interchange every six miles. That's correct. But you're down in Miami, you can have it every quarter mile. Uh, so I don't understand why, what is the reason for it? I, I know it's a cost, you know, benefit cost thing. I know, thing, it, but and I know it's they, they tend to overlook these, uh, these rural tourist areas that our population more than doubles. I mean, it can triple or mm -hmm. be four times as much on some of these weekends. And you've got, uh, you know, your, your uh, RVs and your hotels that are full that need to get out of here. And that really can't look at the the actual census. No, I, can, I completely agree. Now that okay. particular project would fall back in Gadsden County uh -huh. because that's where the interchange is mm -hmm. or would be there and I know we've talked with CRTPA at, the, at that time too about is this something we can do but that would be I think something we were talking about on the way down actually talking about that. I said that might be something to maybe try to put forth again. You know, yeah, possibly. Say, you know, mm -hmm. it's, still on our, it's still on our forefront, you know, even though it's not maybe in our county, it's going to help our county. If we're going right. to call 65 an evacuation mm -hmm. route, it's, a, it's an evacuation route to where? Exactly. It's going yes. to I'm, I'm, not, I'm going to get off my soapbox. I'm on camera. Um, you know, but it is, and then uh, it's the same thing as a sidewalk to, to nowhere. You know, you're sending you're them right. there to have nowhere Absolutely. to go. Plus, a side note, it would help with economic impact here in the South. Absolutely, yes. 67 mm -hmm. for us here in Carabelle, mm -hmm. in this area, 
would be a priority for us right. uh, because we it, it, it won't do us no good if we can't get them up there. And the ec economical part of it, I, I hear quite a number of people that visit St. George Island and Franklin County, they don't come to Caravel because they don't want to travel Highway 67. Mm -hmm. It's too rough. It's too torn up. And it's really it's bad narrow. right now. I don't know if it's going down it, but oh, so, yeah. I mean, I'm well, like, we, we flooded. God, yes, it's I mean, it's, it, it is, yes. You have it's to drive under, through water. underwater. Heavy mm -hmm. rain, it's Come, flooded. Yeah. yeah. And they're, and the way they're patching it up, it looks like, it looks like my, my grandmother quilting. I met the site no. supervisor. Really? I'll tell you about it. On Tuesday, I met the site supervisor. We were coming over Mary and it was like, one other um, thing, and I'm going to show you. I don't know what they were doing, but you know, we took a left on 67, and it was the regular road, and there was like new pavement, about 300 feet, and then boop, old pavement. And then I was like, and you look up there, and I'm like, is that water on the road? No. New pavement. Old pavement. New pavement. Open. And it does that the whole way back. And I thought, it is. it must be that long since I've driven on 67, but it looks like a... Like some, it's like a patchwork quilt. I'm not kidding. And then, and then in one part, you, it's got a light that's out there. You have to stop. I mean, and if you don't stop and slow down, I'm telling you, you're, you will hide your plane because there's a good six inches of standing water that's just there. I mean, it's just there, and it goes to one lane. Yeah, and it goes to one lane. It's and it is it's awful. Okay. That area is under construction. Yeah. yeah. They're, yeah. Replace, they're replacing a big box culvert there and, and they have it bulkheaded for the uh, drainage mm -hmm. and that's what's holding uh, the water. And the new pavement is in yeah. Liberty County. They had yeah. a you know, they had a, a grant to Scott program. I have one other issue that you did mention housing earlier when you started tonight. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And I wanted to mention that because it's been brought up about transportation, which I, not a problem I agree with. Uh, from where I sit and what I, and in the community, the biggest issue in Franklin County right now on our workforce is workforce housing. Workforce housing. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, our workforce in Franklin County has been priced out of living in Franklin County. Yes. They can't afford to live here. And that's a biggie. And I won't get into many details that I can talk about right now, but somehow, uh, and what has happened is the tourism, VRBOs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, uh, has taken the workforce housing away from the, the everyday worker, the school teacher, the law enforcement officer, the, the correction officer, the carpenter, the construction workers. They can't afford to live in the cost of what these vacation people are paying. Uh, so anyway, workforce housing is a biggie in Franklin County, Carabelle and Franklin County. And I'll just stop right there on that because that's like a, a big subject. Ship programs and things like that here? They do. Franklin County, there's I a I mean, that, that's one thing. <laughs> no, we know about those, but yeah, that's we need so to be much bigger than that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, okay, so to get back on the transportation. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, I uh, uh, requested or... Uh, traffic safety team did back in 2015 an intersection analysis and speed zone review there for um, downtown Carabelle, maybe from the city limits here, right here, all the way to the bridge. And somewhere in that area, we were requesting 25 miles per hour, similar to Apalachicola. And I've got the first few pages of that analysis. I'll give it to you and possibly you can get the rest of it. It's like 39 pages from the DOT there. Their determination, no. And what I learned a lot uh, through those years, constantly, because uh, uh, officers from the uh, FHP, Sheriff Department, sit, Police Department, sit on that board as well. Uh, the FHP does not want to lower the speed limit on 98, and a, a lot of y'all don't realize that. They, want, they would prefer, if they could have it 45 miles an hour, they say there's less uh, accidents when it's 45 miles an hour. When people are having to slow down, to turn, to this, to that, to stop at traffic lights, there's, there's more accidents. But they realize they can't have it 45 miles an hour, so, you know, they've got to lower it in certain communities. They lowered it in East Point a couple of three years ago, 10 miles an hour, they, they lowered it that much. 
um, and you know we'd like to. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, complaints and, and comments throughout the years to lower it in, in Carabelle as well. And then uh, uh, we submitted in 2019 um, uh, a, a speed zone analysis, and they they sent back um, for um, to lower the speed zone and possibly consider in the future in their 10-year plan mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the vicinity of Island View Park because people are turning in there. Eventually mm -hmm. it will be similar to what they're discussing here at St. James Bay uh, and that's in a, a, a curve, a, right. a steep yeah. S curve. Yeah. Uh, so something to slow people down there and <coughs> to maybe a turn lane. And then uh, the same thing in the vicinity of Ken Coke Road uh, to slow people down in that area. It's kind of blind there, and that's where people come to turn to the Kendrick Sports Complex, which is a big uh, place where they have ball tournaments and such. And then also to slow, which is another S curve at the on the other side of Carabelle West at the uh, Gulf Beach Drive. There, people are turning in that into that area to go. Um, to the um, McKissick Beach area. That's not here, right? Yes, and I, I've got it all on this um, request, and I'll, I'll give that to you, too, I, so I know, we don't. It's funny that I don't even know the names of the roads, but just by you describing I've it. I've got the map. I've I know got exactly maps the three and stuff. places you're talking about, mm -hmm. just, just having driven it. So I'll, I'll give that to you. As well, and they have looked at approving reducing the speed on that, or that's I beg your pardon, they are looking at reducing no. the speed, or they decline. They just that hardly speed. wouldn't even consider this request. This last one, from I was thinking about. Mm. okay. Um, let me see, uh, and I've got a list of other things that you know that we went through uh, over those years. I right. can I can email that to you, but there are a lot of people that are concerned about the uh, interstate. 98 traffic safety and pedestrian safety mm -hmm. hazardous lines of sight and and you know <coughs> that, that kind of thing could, okay. could we put up the qr code that takes us to the website so people can kind of see i can just go to the website well, 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 on the back of here. if they click on it it's just what they get mm -hmm. Wait so if you if you take that qr oh, code right. and hook in and yeah it's right here in your phone It'll take you to the web that website. Yeah, so I see that. Yes, that we got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then that's also yeah. got the the um, the app on here to, to add your add your comments. So if yes. you if you've got <clears throat> this is for the map here, and then if you want to if you've got friends or you know folks that you want to lead that to, they can get right on here and they can fill out the form. Right. That you've got your, your Same one we have at the front door. And, and I see here, uh, I have to look at my yeah, notes for a reminder, but, uh, yeah. down uh, headed west just on this side of East Point, uh, back in 2015, the county requested uh, to lower the speed limit from 55 to 45, uh, just uh, this side of East Point, right in that area of the RV parks that are there, the Coastline right. RV Park mm -hmm. and the Visitor Center. I, I don't think I don't think that that happened. And then we did uh, request the uh, rumble, um, the, rumble strips. Uh, yes, rumble strips and and re reflectors at night. Uh, we requested that uh, between uh, Lake Morality Road and Gulf Avenue and uh, here in in, in uh, Carabelle, and we got that. And then we also okay. requested it uh, uh, between. Um, going up north on 319 from the summer camp area to Rio Vista Road, and that, that hasn't happened yet. But when y'all talked about repaving there, they just put the rumble lines and the reflectors in there, and I, I don't know, you know, repaving. I was thinking they they were, I was there, I thought the other night I was there, there, and I thought I saw some reflectors being in On 319? Yeah, headed towards Chop Chop. Maybe, maybe. That, but sometimes that, we get what we we ask for yeah, they put from there. Reflectors but, in from summer camp yeah, to stop uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. They uh, yeah. They but they have yeah. they have a a, a funding plan. You know, they don't they have, have a plan. Years, they make yeah. a master plan, and then they I, schedule I, I, I money drive back at night for it out over like five and a ten year period. You know, got the trees going tree tree tree. You know, with like it's almost like a strobe light. But yeah, there's a bunch of reflectors. I drove by last night and we saw them because we took the forest road back. We didn't. We took three nineteen back. Yes. So I think it was great. 
I think we got a lot of information. There's there's a lot in there that I didn't know that I think are, are really good. Absolutely. I got some 20 different comments, so we'll sit down with uh, me and, and Mary and you and kind of make sure we capture them all from all of us and get them out there. And what, will we put these? Will we do them in a week we put onto our website then? Yeah, we okay. That way you can guys look at it and say, no, you got that wrong, or yeah, yeah you got that our, spot on. All our contact information is in there. So you guys think yeah. of something afterward, give us a shout. Um, that St. James Bay one's very interesting now, you know, because you don't have any seeing it. Mm -hmm. to turn it and, and Chester, also uh, on top of that, the going through that uh, road, your main road there is, what's Crooked that? Crooked River. Uh, or, uh, McIntyre. McIntyre, yeah. yeah that's a county all the way road. Back. That's that's oh, as you turn, turn right, in there. Yes, it takes you all the way to the bridge. But uh, they're going to uh, does it? The, the the, uh, road he road. has a uh, right, Mr. Green has a, um, has a he has a condo a a uh, or apartment building scheduled to be built back there, well, right? I don't yeah, know that, 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 that got, that got canceled. Okay, yeah, he did cancel that. That got canceled. In fact, he's got the property up for sale. Yeah. All right. Never come to town and tell everybody you're broke and then expect <laughs> to get uh, I, I still don't. And I understand what that goes on. As soon as you pass the, the nursing home or the rehab center in Turkey. <clears throat> but it comes back out on 319. Yeah, yep. right in front of the yep. bridge. In fact, as a matter of fact, when, uh, when Michael went through when 98 had all the debris all over it, that's what everybody was using to get out, was, mm -hmm. was that dirt road. It gets a little dicey sometimes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right, yeah. If you're going this way, yeah, if you're going that way, right there is where it see becomes a dirt road. Right there, you can see it. Oh. And if you take, if you get on that, you can take it all the way to the bridge. That's wild. Does it save you any time? Not really. I had a guy that works out the golf course. Uh, time it, it's eight miles either way. You don't want to go fast. Yeah. Well, that's what I was wondering. It's a little dicey. Yeah. <laughs> it's eight miles either way you go. Gotcha. Uh, but it's another way out. Right. Was the uh, right. yeah. dismissal just the rest of them? Uh, requested by Michael. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, Thanks, everybody. We go to this, really appreciate uh, it. So, uh, we we the docket.